We have spoken about abstract states, abstract UI, and also acceptance test. Let's see how the ETF can really put everything together and allow you to really perform your design activity for your Lab 3 and the projects. So ETF, Eiffel Testing Framework, really facilitates you to write and execute input-output-based acceptance test. We already talked about how the input and output look like for an acceptance test previously. So inputs are simply a trace, a sequential trace of events. So this will be one example over here. So you can see this is one input example for acceptance test that we talked about before. And this will be simply interleaving uh, events and states for the output. Okay, and so uh, and also the after UI as we talked about before is simply uh, the list of input event that might occur, like uh, uh, abstracting the user interactions, and the output as I just uh, said. So notice that the output may be customized, but for the purpose of your lab three and the projects, we tell you already the structure for the uh, abstract uh, state just to make it simpler for you. So you don't need to worry about the format; just follow the instructions. That'll be fine. Okay, so an executable ETF project tailored for the system under development can already be generated using the event decorations, basically the abstract UI. So given something like this that we talked about before, for example, so if you're given this particular, we also call grammar sometimes, but I can think about this abstract, abstract UI specification. Given this text file, you can actually generate an, an ETF project containing all the skeleton uh, code already. So the only thing that's uh, left uh, to be implemented would be the model cluster. That's uh, how the ETF works, assuming that you watch the tutorial video. Okay, and then we say that once the business model is implemented, there will be only a small number of steps to follow to really connect to the uh, ETF project. I'll let you uh, uh, work, uh, study the details in the tutorial video. I'm not gonna repeat. And also once connected, you can you can actually try to run and rerun all the acceptance tests. And especially look at the last video in the tutorial to see how we can do uh, regression testing. Also, I'll leave, uh, leave the technical details to you in the tutorial. I want to just talk very quickly about the flow uh, of uh, the workflow for ETF. Okay, let me switch to iPad about this particular diagram here very quickly. Okay, think about it this way. Okay, let's start with uh, what you know as a user. Okay, so first of all, you have to define and also to derive. Okay, so first of all, we call them monitor events sometimes because they're like a, if you are uh, control engineers, so you, you must be very familiar with the concept about monitor events, meaning that it was just monitoring what's really happening from the external world. But you can think about this just abstract UI. Okay, this part here. So this part over here is simply just the abstract UI. You might have to come up with the abstract UI yourself, or you, you may just be given. In Lab 3 and Project, you're simply given the abstract UI. And then, what's really important is about the use cases. In order to specify the input for acceptance test, you have to specify a sequence of events. So, for this part over here, you might be given some starter, some small number of starter, uh, some starter test. And also, you have to come up with your own. On your own. So that's important to notice, right? So these are the two things you have to worry about as a user, okay? And then you will simply just how do how do I generate the uh, ETF projects? What I will do is I will simply just pass run the ETF dash new, and then it's going to generate uh, the code skeleton over here. So everything will just be an executable project and already, even though the business model here is really the gold that you have to program, the business model over here. So you will have to implement the business model. Once you have done that, you can simply connect to the code skeleton by calling the relevant model operations for the abstract uh, user commands classes, right? You can look at the uh, tutorial for detail. And then given that we got some use cases uh, that we come up with previously, you can simply pass them into uh, the code skeleton and run it, right? So once you run, it's going to generate uh, abstract states, okay? Abstract state is, uh, be, uh, you know, the interleaving uh, between the events and also the abstract states. And now you have to really uh, think about when you look at the abstract states, if it's simply just something given, you will just have to check to see whether your program produces something that's identical. If it's something that you come out on your own, you will have to check against how the Oracle program will, will actually produce in this case. But either way, if there's anything that's actually wrong, 
you may have to fix or add additional cases uh, for the use cases. I'll just say in general. It may be that the uh, test cases you, you, uh, you come up on your own may not be uh, complete. You may have to uh, fix it, right? And then most likely, if you find anything that's uh, unsatisfactory, you may have to go all the way to your model over here and fix your model classes or your model operations. And then I would say it's not really applicable for your particular, your lab three and also the project to say, maybe, well, just in, in general, if you find that the abstract states is lacking some important information for your developments, you may want to, uh, want to add one more event or maybe uh, change the signature of the events. In that case, you may actually have to uh, maybe go back. Uh, let me use a different color here. You may have to go all the way back to really to uh, the monitor events over here and then regenerates the ETF. But I would say this particular blue path is not applicable for your project at Lab3. You, uh, you can think about, you can consider the monitor events we give to you are already stable. Okay, so that's about the overall workflow for the ETF. Okay, so hopefully you already grasp this, uh, grasp this already from the uh, tutorial video. Let me go back here and let's talk about uh, a, a few more details about ETF. So that's uh, just uh, like a quick uh, summary of what you can do. So that's the uh, grammar file or abstract UI you can use to generate your ETF. And this part here is just one acceptance test output. Okay. And then, so this uh, the detail generated code, which you, you already saw the detail from your uh, tutorial video. So just notice that the model cluster, uh, the model cluster and also the abstract user commands cluster. So these are the only two points you will have to touch in order to complete your lab three and also the projects. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more about architecture for the ETF. Let's first go through the slides and I'll switch to the iPad. So the cluster, the classes in the model cluster are hidden from the users, but this is really the model cluster you have to worry about. This is the main goal of your design. So you want to add as many classes as you think necessary to restructure the model cluster in a way where the architecture is going to solve your design problem. And then all the command reference, reference to the same model instance. Re recall in the uh, previous uh, singleton lecture at the end, we actually talk about how you can identify the singleton pattern in the ETF project. Basically, the model over here is really uh, the only singleton access that's ex uh, exclusive, is supported by ETF model access. So this is something we assume you know already from the previous week's lecture about singleton pattern. You can see over here, this arrow here tells you that's expanded, right? That's also part of the uh, uh, singleton pattern. And this is the only way to by calling ETF model access.m to really get a singleton reference to the model reference. That there's only one single instance of the model that's going to be manipulated by the various commands. I'll show you some runtime visualization uh, maybe a little bit later. So when a user's request is made, a command object is going to be created and then it's going to invoke some relevant features, routines, or attributes on the model cluster. So this is the point I would like to illustrate to you in just a moment, visually. And then updates to the model are published to the output handler. So this part over here, this has to do with the so-called event-driven design, which we'll talk about later when we talk about observer design pattern. I'll say this part here, just take it for granted. Every time if you actually update your model, it will eventually be reflected to the output on the terminal somehow. Okay, But exactly how it is going to happen, we'll talk about it when we get to the observer and event-driven design pattern later. Okay, so now let me uh, switch to uh, this particular one here. I'll just show you some correspondence here quickly, just to remind you. So remember, the, uh, this is the abstract UI that we actually used in order to generate the ETF projects, right? So now we got new deposit, withdraw and transfer. That's why we got new deposit, withdraw and transfer. Each one of them, each abstract event in the abstract UI has been turned into a descendant class over here under the ETF command. And the ETF command actually has a client supply relation to the ETF model. And the only way to really get a singleton access to the ETF model is by ETF model access. That is why every uh, every descendant class over here under the ETF command, you can actually call using the model over here, for example. Okay, when you say model over here, it's inherited from the model over here in the uh, ETF command. Okay, so that's really important to notice. And point number two. You want to know about for this model cluster. So here, the number one principle you want to apply will be modularity. 
And if you re try to recall, when we talk about modularity in the uh, previous lecture, you may want to review the notes quickly. Modularity really means you want to decompose your solution into meaningful logical units, and each unit will be a single class. And also remem remember the cohesion principle that we talk about. You want to make sure every class is cohesive in the sense that it should represent a single unifying thing of purpose meaning that all the features you include in a single class should be relevant to each other. Anything that's not really so relevant should be uh, should be pushed out to another module, okay? And then for modularity here, uh, what I recommended in the video is you may want to rename this particular default name of ETF model. For example, maybe it's by bank, for example, right? Let's say for the bank application. And this ETF model access will be maybe bank access. That will be my recommendation. And then exactly how you actually uh, build up the architecture for the model cluster is completely up to you. So here, you always want to think about, for example, let's say you have one class over here called bank. Okay, I already rename it into just uh, from ETF model into bank. And the bank might have a client supplier relation over here, maybe called ACCS for accounts. And then you have another class called accounts. And then you might also decide to have some inheritance relation. Maybe you have maybe two accounts over here, inheritance. And then, so maybe you got one savings account and also you got another one called check account. Okay, so that's the architecture you will have to really come up uh, on your own. So that's really the, the main purpose for this course. You want to practice doing your own design, okay? That's about the architecture for the ETF uh, projects. So these are the two clusters you really always pay attention to, the model cluster and also the user commands cluster, okay? Let me go a little bit further to talk about uh, the singleton pattern, which is also very important. So if you look at the ETF command class over here, ETF command, which is really the top of the hierarchy over here, ETF command, okay? So now you can see that over there, we declare model by default, simply ETF model. Of course, later, if you rename ETF model over here to be simply bank, it will be renamed to be bank as well, okay? And then also ETF model access will also be bank access, okay? And now, every time, if you try to uh, create a new command, notice that this class is simply just deferred. So which means you can only create a new instance of its effective descendants, like an ETF, uh, like over here, ETF new, ETF deposit, ETF withdraw, and also ETF transfer, depending on what the extra UI is. And then whenever you're creating a new instance, you're just going to get MA.A. You can see MA over here is of type the bank access. So that's exactly the single pattern that we talked about last week. I assume that you actually understand this. Otherwise, approach me for uh, clarification, okay? So every time you can simply re retrieve this singleton instance. Or you can think about, how about share instance? Share reference of the model. So there's only a single model objects throughout the lifetime of your application. So every time you do any updates to the model, you're really updating the same model, like the same share back data. And then just to do a little bit more uh, detail here, let's say, for example, Let's talk about ETF deposit, for example, ETF deposit, right? So now I'll talk about ETF deposit. In that, uh, it will be very uh, similar in the, for the structure for other commands as well. So now for ETF uh, deposit, you can see this part over here is really about error handling. You can see you're saying if some condition is actually true, you will set some error message. If some other condition is true, you will set some error message, right? You can think about these actually correspond to the preconditions for your model operation. So in your model cluster, you should really follow the, the design by contracts uh, principle by defining uh, proper preconditions. And then from the abstract UI, you will try to uh, impose some error messages uh, when the precondition is actually violated. So you may have as many if, else if uh, as necessary. And the final one over here, typically here, you can think about this is the normal case. The normal case with no errors, in which case it will simply call the model which is uh, which you get from this particular singleton uh, pattern over here. And then you will simply call some uh, routine defined in the model cluster. 
what this routine should be really called it doesn't have to be deposit by the way so no one said you, you should you should always get uh, this name over here to be the same as this name over here no not really so think about remember i said before the uh, ui and also the model they should be completely independent meaning that any operation name uh would be up to your choice really okay so that's about the little bit more details i want to talk about okay so finally i want to get to uh how you can run acceptance test over here for your etf model okay so now this picture might look familiar to you i'm sure okay let me just remind you quickly if you go back to uh the previous one let me show you here in the previous one where we talk about acceptance test so here we talk about system under developments over here sud but now since now we are using the etf so now the middle part can be replaced by just the architecture that we talk about you can think about initially you simply generate some startup project that's already executable once you have finished the developments for the model part everything will be fully functional okay of course you got to do test to make sure that's really the case i want to do a little bit of visualization to really show you how things work at the runtime again so let me set a context you got input for the acceptance test a sequence of events also you got the output is going to be an, an interleaving sequence of abstract states and also the events right that's what we said previously how do how does things work let me just talk about the default behavior let's just say without your customized in the model architecture what's going to happen is uh let's say this we're going to run uh the events one by one we're going to say execute the new allen first when you say new allen over here the new over here really correspond to the etf new over here so what you will do is it's actually going to call the make to really create that particular command and if you the make is actually inherited from the etf command make which is is going to retrieve the model and remember the m over here according to a single the pattern it should be a once routine which means for the very first time you call that it's going to create a new model instance okay let me just write it down Okay, I'm just really uh, just going through the logic that we actually covered last week. Hopefully, you are feeling comfortable with this. So after this, is we are we are going to create a ETF model objects over here. So ETF and also model. I forgot exactly what the attributes are. For example, maybe some integer i and also string s. But once you get your customized model classes, it will be slightly different, of course. Okay, let's say i will be zeros, s will just be empty string, for example, and then that'll be the first one and then so what we will do is when you call etf uh and then you're also going to create this particular etf new command instance as well okay so you're also going to create uh etf also new and then one of uh one of its uh one of its feature one of its attribute will just be model that is why you can actually use model in its code okay so now one of them is simply just model and then model is simply just pointing to this particular share model instance okay so that's the first line and of course uh, that's why if you try to call any any operation on the model for example if you say model.new or model.deposit of course you're going to update only this instance right okay so let's just do one more okay just to show you the singleton effects let's say we also try to do new mark in that case uh let me just do an, uh, let, let me just uh, skip this one and just uh, give you another one let's say if we do deposit allen and then 200 let's say okay if you do that over here uh let me use orange here so that means you're going to again first of all create this particular uh command objects over here so that'll be etf deposit etf deposit over here the corresponding one so that'll be etf deposit and then that one there is also going to call the same make but now remember this is already the subsequent call to the very first call it's not the first one anymore so rather than creating new objects of type etf model we're just going to re uh, retrieve the same reference over here that's exactly how the single pattern works so that means over here model is just going to be another field over here so that one there is actually going to point to this particular same model object here, here. so you can see that's really the aliasing we really have only a single shared 
model instance over here. Okay, and then of course, depending on how you implement this particular uh, deposit, for example, you can see for deposit over here, eventually you would say model.deposit, and then this model operation presumably is going to update the model objects accordingly. For example, you can see once I call that, since I'm referring to this particular model object here, I might, I might simply just change its balance. Let's pretend I is a balance, maybe from zero to 200. So you're really updating this. Uh, and then all the subsequent commands, deposit and transfer, when you create them later, they will still referring to, they will still be referring to the same model objects. So that's really happening at the runtime. So most importantly, before I conclude the slides, there's only a single model instance ensured by the singleton pattern. And every time when you're executing the acceptance test over here, every time when you execute this, 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 and this, you're always creating a new command object like this. And then all, every command object is just going to refer to the same singleton instance over here. Okay, that's how everything works. Okay, so hopefully that visualization helps uh, on clarifying uh, how the ETF works as far as your uh, development is concerned. Okay, finally, I would like to talk about uh, regression testing. Okay, so this is actually covered by your the last video of your ETF projects. I'm not going to talk uh, repeat the details. That will be a waste of your time. So uh, assuming that you have watched the video already, I just want to point out some important points quickly. Okay, so we talk about uh, inputs for the acceptance test, and they should look like something like this, a simply a sequence of, of events over here. And also we talk about also the outputs. It will be you have to know the distinction between actual outputs and also expected outputs. So they will, both of them will be of this particular format, right? It can, it's going to be an interleaving between states and also events. Now the difference is actual outputs is actually produced by your program, which may or may not be correct. How do you know if that's correct? You have to try to see if it's identical to the expected output that's produced by the Oracle program. So that's something I want to emphasize again. So that would be the idea for running the regression testing automatically. Final points I'd like to make. It's about how you can automate the regression testing. We have to constrain that the Oracle program is only available on your uh, on the Linux platform. So you may have to use the cloud to synchronize your projects, as we also mentioned in the video. So you may have to develop and also debug your projects on your home copy. And every time you're done with some updates, you can actually upload it into the GitHub. And then there'll be a, like a backup also with a version history. And then every time you want to run a regression test, which I, I really suggest for almost every few changes or every single change you make to your project for the ETF, you should really run a regression test just to make sure everything still works. You don't want to do it only after a few hours. That'll be too late. For the school copy on your red account, you, you can run the Oracle and also you can run the regression testing, right? So that's something we said in the tutorial video. So I'm gonna assume you're okay with it. Uh, for those of you who cannot really make uh, GitHub to work, you may want to look into, there is a way to really copy from your home uh, folder directly into the school copy by using terminal. It's something called SCP command. SCP, secure copy. You can actually look into how SCP works online. Uh, if you really got trouble, you want to use it, you can uh, approach me and then I can show you in, uh, during the office hour. Okay, so that's all about the ETF I'd like to emphasize to you. And so let me just finish the slides quickly. Okay, so that's the uh, code structure which I would just talk about, and that's the, uh, the singleton pattern. So beyond this lecture, I'll, again, I would like you to just go to the classes and make sure really you're really convinced the singleton pattern is really there. You want to look at the ETF model for the shared data, the ETF model access for the exclusive ones access, and also you got ETF command, the deferred class at the top, and also you got all the subclasses corresponding to the abstract UI. So if, for example, you got ETF command, and you define, uh, you declare ETF, ETF model and using ETF model access to get retrieve the singleton, singleton instance. And also you got ETF deposit, for example, and then you can actually use uh, model that some routine. Well, of course we got a more, much more detailed structure over here uh, that you can actually look into. That's the general structure you can follow. Okay, so that's about this particular lecture about ETF. So please make sure you really review all the important concepts about abstract UI, uh, abstract states, acceptance test and also regression test. They are all important for you to really uh, uh, complete all the design activities for the rest of this semester.